It's so awesome. I need a t-shirt with that. <laughs> and then he pulls his arms back, and we try to use the power of the lower body to undefault, to unarch the lower back, right? And then slowly we turn because on a traditional weight form, the risers would have, there wouldn't be risers, so the tension would pull you down rather than forward, right? Which even creates a, a more severe um, response of the body to work from this part of you, right? Now, here's one of the things that often happens in modern teaching where Cole Strauss is taught like this. And again, I'm not saying don't ever do this. There's a place for everything. I'm just saying there might be a better way in the philosophy that I'm teaching, all right? One way to do this exercise very commonly is to lift the chest forward and up while you pull. and then they turn. Do that one more time exactly like that. I just want you to look at it. I'll show you a different way. You get to make up your mind about what happens and which version. Good. And now stay long. Reach the crown of your head forward, your toes back. First, get to pull your arms down and back by your sides. And once your arms meet the level of your hips, you begin to lift your chest forward and up against it. And then we turn. So all I'm changing is the timing. I still want him to backbend, I still want him to pull, but I first want him to find length through his body while he pulls until he gets to extend his shoulders so far that his hands go high up in his hips and then he just takes the rest of the body with him. One more time, maybe. Coming down, coming back, forward and up. See the difference? Yeah. How would you describe it? What happens in one version versus the other? <laughs> he stays long, we all agree. It comes up just as hot, right? But there's more length in the spine. Probably feels a lot better too. Yeah. Um, so, so what's what's the difference? There's more support in your starting from here versus mm -hmm. here. Yeah, because if you allow your chest to come up just a little bit too soon, then you're basically telling your body to pull from there, right? And then you're at a loss because yeah, you can you can think your way through not doing that. But why not let the reformer teach you how it works, right? Why not time it well enough so that actually the, the tension that pulls on you throughout this movement gives you a better feedback, gives you the right feedback. How does this connect to the hundred? Well, we were just on our back pulling straps now. Now we're on our stomach pulling straps from in front of us to back behind us. Later on, we'll do it kneeling, then we'll do it standing. Developmental logic, right? Bodies is three movements. Just flipped around, turned upside down, topsy turvy, all these things, right? Mm -hmm. You get to step up to the side. Then there's T pull, of course. I'm going to add that in later. All right, so we have footwork 100, just the position. Flip it around. We have swan dive pull straps, right? Swan dive, I think, if I ask myself, what is this for? Is to connect the full body into extension. Whereas pull straps is about isolating into the portion of our spine that we try to unflex, to unhunch, right? Because there's no way you get to pull if you don't build the opposition that might just pull you over time from here to here to here. Yeah, are we good on these? Yeah. So we have 